Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Today we will study something very important about the Ascendant Nakshatra. Now many times you might have seen so many videos on Ascendant Nakshatra and we think that okay, for example, my Ascendant Nakshatra is XYZ. So all the traits of that particular Nakshatra will be active in my life. Okay but actually that's not the case because of two reasons because one is everybody has an ascendant nakshatra but uh, the planets are arranged differently which means uh, the traits which that nakshatra represents for those to fructify in your life there need to be certain placements in your chart which will decide if the good traits of the nakshatra or the bad traits or other you know you could say the positive or the challenging ones will be activated in your life okay uh, and the second reason is because everybody also has different dashas <coughs> so these two reasons are why everybody may have a same ascendant nakshatra but you will have a different story now before we discuss that you need to understand what's the difference between the ascendant nakshatra and the moon nakshatra the moon nakshatra which is known as the janma nakshatra will tell you the story from the level of the mind uh, but the ascendant nakshatra will tell you the story uh, from the external world okay so which means the lagna nakshatra will tell you what is happening externally which is also very important because that tells you what events uh, could happen in your life okay so therefore now let's take uh, an example and try to understand this so for example if you see here uh, this is a virgo lagna chart this is one of my clients chart and this chart is uh, shared uh, with uh, his permission this is a male's chart 30th july 1986 9:20 am bijnor uttar pradesh india so now what's going on is Virgo Lagna and if you see here uh, the ascendant nakshatra is Uttar Falguni okay so ascendant nakshatra is where your ascendant is not where your ascendant lord so for example here uh, Virgo ascendant is there but ascendant lord is Mercury so Mercury is in Punarvasu if you see so which one is ascendant nakshatra is it uttar falguni or <coughs> is it punarvasu well the answer is it is uttar falguni okay and um, punarvasu is the mercury uh, nakshatra which means is the nakshatra of the uh, ascendant lord okay but the ascendant nakshatra is undoubtedly uttar falguni so you can get this report in astrosage.com and wherever the ASC and nakshatra is written that is your ascendant nakshatra period okay now what is going on in the chart so you see uh, uttar falguni is the lagna nakshatra which means uttar falguni related traits will be activated okay now what 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 are some of the traits related to uttar falguni uttar falguni nakshatra is related to contracts deals negotiations friendships okay now it can also deal with um, scandals okay sometimes on, on a derogatory sense on the problematic side on the bad side uh, it can deal with a lot of affairs okay it can deal with multiple marriages divorces and all this because uh, if you see the story of uttar falguni uh, arjuna was born with moon in uttar falguni and this uh, story is quite important because Arjuna had four wives okay now how do you decide what will happen to this person okay Uttar Falguni is also related to Aryaman and we know all the things that Uttar Falguni represents but for this particular person what will be activated so first you need to check where is the Lagna Lord so for example this is a Virgo Lagna person and the Lagnesh is Mercury is in the 11th house okay very 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 important why am I saying this is very important because you need to check three important planets the Lagnesh Sun and Moon and of course other planets also but primarily these three to understand where is the flow of the chart so for example 
now we have a clue that among the three we have the lagnesh mercury and the sun who is in the 11th house so what is 11th house 11th house is again the house of success networks deals contracts and all this okay it's like success with partnerships and with other people so that means now this is a trait which is matching with uttar falgu nakshatra because two prominent planets are saying the same thing okay uttar falgu is a nakshatra of success basically okay so now we see that this is there okay but then we also see in numerology uh, which is his date of birth if he has some powerful numbers so for example when it comes to uh, networking and association there are certain numbers which are required so we need either uh, the number 7 or the number 5 so now what is going on if you see he does not have the number 5 and he has the number 7 <coughs> and if you add his basic number is 30 which is 3 and if you add his whole date of birth which is destiny number which again comes to 7 okay 3 plus 7 plus 1 plus 9 plus 8 plus 6 is again 7 so he does not have number 5 but he has number 7 number 7 is the number of luck okay and his destiny number is also 7 so this makes it more powerful <coughs> and 7 is the number that shows you will get things from other people because other people will come and give you things which you gave to them in your previous lifetime in in a good sense okay not like uh, in a wrong sense okay so it's like you gave donations to somebody now that person is coming back and giving you all the money okay so that means this person has luck with him because the number 7 in numerology shows luck so that means you can say that this person will be successful in terms of earning money and uh in forming deals negotiations and contracts okay now having said that we need to see the third planet which is the moon as i said lagnesh sun and moon so if you see where is moon moon is in the sign of aries in the 8th house okay now what is 8th house 8th house is the house of affairs or you could say you know problems in marriage okay or defamation or something like that and if you see uh where is the moon the moon is placed in kritika nakshatra which is another uh, scandalous nakshatra because this has to do with affairs so but then again we need to see the overall planets we need to see the chart if there are problems in marriage if there's a problem with venus and especially the seventh house and the seventh lord okay then we know that there there are problems okay so now what is going on you need to see venus venus is the natural karaka for a wife in a man's chart okay so where is venus venus is in the 12th house which sign is venus is venus is in leo in enemy sign also in the navamsha if you see he is again in the 12th house again he is in enemy sign okay so this is not the best placement for venus although venus is in the same house in both the d1 and d9 it's called as bhavottam but because the signs are very bad in both the charts uh, bhavottam will not be able to save him much but again that's not enough we need to see what is going on with the seventh house now is there a planet in the seventh house well there is no planet this house is empty as you can see here but we need to see if any other planet is aspecting the seventh house well yes mars with its fourth aspect 1 2 3 4 is aspecting this house and this is not very good for marriage this is a placement called as mangalik dosh okay but we also need to check if there is any other planet so there are no other planetary aspects to this some people say rahu aspects the 12th house from where it sits so if you want you can take that but if you don't consider uh saturn is not aspecting uh, no other planet is aspecting the 7th house but you need to see where is the 7th lord so the 7th lord if you see is very badly placed because 
the seventh lord is placed in the sixth house which is the worst placement because it is placed 12th to itself and seventh house as you know is the house of marriage and sixth house as you know is the house of separation divorce and all this and also it is in a very bad uh, sign okay because jupiter does very badly in uh, air signs like aquarius and if you see his uh, navamsha chart the seventh lord of the d1 here uh, again is in the sixth house jupiter again he's in a bad sign air sign gemini okay seventh lord badly placed as jupiter in an air sign can give tendency to have a lot of affairs okay because the air signs show a lot of interaction mingling and uh, desire to have sexual indulgence okay <coughs> And if you see the seventh lord of the Navamsha chart, which is nothing but the moon, is again in the twelfth house. Okay, again with this Venus, as you can see, twelfth house again is the house of affairs, and um, yeah, he hidden physical private life basically. Okay, so then we get an important clue that his moon is in a scandalous nakshatra like Ritika. <clears throat> and we need to see what is the situation of the trines okay so what is going on in the trinal houses so if you see the fifth house is empty the ninth house is empty the lagna is like a trine and a kendra it is also empty but for now let's take the fifth and the ninth now now where is the ninth lord ninth lord is again venus again badly placed Where's the fifth lord? The fifth lord is Saturn. Again, the dispositor of the seventh lord, which is again very badly placed because it is in an enemy sign like uh, the sign of Scorpio, which is the sign ruled by Mars. Okay. Now, Shanin third house is good for some other reasons, but because the sign is bad, uh, internally it is not the best thing to have. And if you see uh, this chart the navamsha chart the fifth lord is again venus again very badly placed 12th house enemy sign and if you see the ninth lord is mercury again placed in the seventh which is not very bad but again the sign is not good okay so the awareness is not there so that means this person may have a tendency to have too many affairs and you know that will lead to breakage of marriage and all this okay <clears throat> so now generally Uttar Falguni Nakshatra has the trait of maintaining marriages okay but in this person in the case of this person it will be completely opposite it will have a very uh, different uh, flavor which means the person will get married and then the marriage will break again there will be a new marriage so multiple marriages will come in this context okay in our case of arjuna there was no break so he married four wives but the marriage was intact but in this person's case it will not be so okay and it has not been so the person has had multiple relationships and also multiple marriages okay so therefore you need to see how things are manifesting now if you see the fifth house fifth house has the aspect of the lagnesh which is mercury because from the 11th mercury is aspecting so this person is very much interested in love affairs and if you see his date of birth he also has six which is the number of venus and also number seven which is the number of luck so this means the person is considerably lucky when it comes to attracting members of the opposite sex so women uh, get attracted to this person quite uh, effortlessly rather uh, and also if you see the fifth lord is in uh, anuradha nakshatra which is also a nakshatra which is related to love and devotion and all this okay but what what's wrong here is that the seventh house is very problematic which means the person cannot either convert the relationship into marriage or even if it is converted the marriage doesn't sustain for whatsoever reason now why is the marriage not sustaining well 
there could be the, the many reasons like for example venus is in 12th house you know some other ladies involved you know some um, yeah it, it's like the person's lack of commitment okay you could say that <clears throat> and this is something which the person himself also agrees and accepts uh, and uh, even if you see the navamsha there is not much help there okay so what can we conclude from here so we can conclude that one aspect of uttar falguni which is success in career through deals negotiations contracts and all this is fantastic because uh, the lagnesh is in the 11th house which is again with the sun and uh, overall the chart is quite strong for profession uh, even the seventh lord is in the sixth house which is again artha house so it shows you know uh, partnerships converting into finances okay something like that <coughs> business partnerships uh, but considering the other aspect of uh, good marriage that is not there and multiple marriages multiple love affairs that is there because of also moon in kritika nakshatra and venus in the 12th and 7th lord in the 6th and 5th lord in anuradha okay and presence of number 6 and 7 in the date of birth okay so therefore i hope this video gave you a good clue in regards to how to read a chart just don't blindly say Oh, Uttar Falguni and you will have a great marriage. Oh, Uttar Falguni, you will have great things. Okay. So please read the overall chart and only then try to see how uh, Ascendant Nakshatra behaves. All right. Thank you so much for your patience. If you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And also comment your thoughts below. What is your Lagna Nakshatra and what are some of the traits that you have seen? uh activating in your life related to the lagna nakshatra okay and for consultations regarding your own chart you can always go to my website listed down in the description section thank you so much god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him for sure